Today on Hashtag This and That, I will be discussing body image with Stephanie Akin and Jenna Mitchell. Just being fit and just, you know, loving who you are. So as long as girls realize that, you know, it's important to be healthy, not necessarily skinny. Skinny isn't always necessarily healthy, and that's what I realized because yeah, I got skinny, but I was—I still wasn't happy with myself. Right. I know that there are some programs that we did where we would write on the mirrors with lipstick or markers and write that you are beautiful. Okay. So to try to um, deteriorate the negative talk. Mm -hmm. Hashtag This and That is a show dedicated to covering a diversity of topics important to women from the perspective and experience of fellow women. Our goal is to give the inside scoop to help and educate women on issues relevant to our daily lives. Thanks for joining another episode of Hashtag This and That on Woman to Woman TV. Today, I'm going to be meeting with Stephanie Atkin and Jenna Mitchell discussing the body image issues that many women face. Stephanie, you've been on the show before, actually, yes. and you brought up a great point about body image, which is how I actually thought to do this idea, especially because afterwards you said that it's a very important struggle for a lot of right. women. So why don't you take me a little bit through your story and why you thought to mention that the first time you were on the show? Okay. Um, well, thank you for having me again. Of it's course. a pleasure. I love being here. <laughs> um, but I have struggled with body image uh, quite a lot in the past, um, you know, just being in high school and, you know, feeling all the pressure and the stereotypes and things like that and trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. um, there was a point in my life where I did struggle with um, eating disorders mm -hmm. and my self-confidence and things like that. Um, so clearly it's an important issue for me. Um, it's, you know, taking some time, but I'm mm -hmm. finally in a place where um, I'm more comfortable with myself. Um, I don't struggle um, with the eating disorder um, as much as I used to. Good. I mean, you know, there's always sometimes We're, setbacks, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, but I'm definitely in a better place um, That's mentally and emotionally and physically. Good. Um, and I just want to just, you know, share um, how important um, body image is um, to women nowadays. Okay, great. So I know a lot of times it's a difficult topic to talk about. So I want to thank you so yes. much for coming on and speaking from, you know, a personal yeah. place with it because it's it's difficult. Mm -hmm. So why don't you take us through kind of how it started and when it started? Because okay. I think a lot of times with the media, it kind of just happens with you know, teens especially, right. or, or young adults. I was watching a TV show the other day and the girl was like, yeah, my friends were, you know, making themselves puke in the bathroom, so I figured, why wouldn't I? And I yeah. was like, oh my gosh. So why don't you take us through a little bit of, of your story? All right. Well, um, it started maybe, um, maybe in 10th grade of uh, high school. Mm -hmm. um, I started hanging out with um, new people, kind of a new crowd. Um, so I was definitely, you know, comparing myself to others. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also was, you know, there were other um, issues going on in my family and things like that um, that I didn't actually realize were um, affecting me so much mm -hmm. and I didn't realize were um, a part of the reason as to why these eating habits um, came up. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, definitely just, I was just comparing myself a lot to, um, you know, my friends, mm -hmm. celebrities and things right. like that. Um, so. In a way, I also sh uh, struggled a lot with um, anxiety issues. Okay. And I felt like I needed a sense of control in my life. Okay. Um, kind of sort of being the perfectionist mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Um, the way that I found control in life was controlling what I put into my body. Okay. Or how I got rid of it. Mm -hmm. So um, it started out as um, me just not eating okay. whatsoever. I would, you know, start the day with a cup of tea and then have an apple and that would be it all yeah. day. Having a sandwich was too much for me. And so yeah. what was your <clears throat> energy like at that point? And how drastically did you see your weight change? I, let me think. Over the course of maybe a year, I think I lost about 20 pounds. Oh my gosh. Um, and did you have 20 pounds to lose? No. Okay. That, back then, I thought back. I did. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very drastic. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a lot of physical changes in my body. Um, my hair started thinning. Okay. Um, I was weak. Mm -hmm. I, I was always cold, I guess, just because mm -hmm. I just didn't have that, you know, circulation really going through my body and stuff like that. Um, so I definitely felt the physical aspect of it. Um, I did purge once in a while, so I would um, see um, 
kind of scabbing on my fingers mm -hmm. and on like my lips and stuff like that, I would get popped eye blood vessels. Oh my god! And I would just kind of blame it on my exhaustion. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't tell anyone about it, but so it was definitely a lot of physical aspects. Did anybody pick it. up on it? No, um, but thankfully, um, I kind of consider myself lucky where I was um, open about it and okay. I was more honest about it. Um, I know not everyone is the same way and handles mm -hmm. it. Um, the same way that I did, but I realized that, you know, this is a problem. Right. Um, I couldn't, um, I was very depressed at a point as well. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't um, go out and like meet up with my friends. It was affecting me socially mm -hmm. a lot. So I was just like, I can't live like this anymore. Right. So, so. you said you started in 10th grade and you're good now. So yes. why don't you walk us through kind of when you realized that you wanted that change and the steps you took in order to do so? Because a lot of times, I feel girls don't take those steps on their mm -hmm. own and drastic measures have to be taken where their family or their friends recognize it and have to take them to a doctor or to a hospital, you know, or death happens in, right. you know, worst case scenarios. Right. But you were able to pick up on it right. yourself. And that's when I realized is when I, I, um, I knew it was a problem when I, you know, the idea came to my head that this is life or death. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not, it's either I win or I lose and mm -hmm. losing is, you know, being in the grave. Right. So um, I realized that and I, you know, it was hard, but you know, I, I uh, stepped up and I, you know, came out to my mom about it. I was like, mom, listen, I'm having some issues. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of research on my own. Okay. Just looking up, you know, different doctors and like different facilities that I could go to. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then I started seeing a therapist. Okay. Um, I was lucky um, that um, my brother, he actually had a friend, um, back in high school who suffered with eating disorders and things. So I kind of had that connection where she was super helpful okay. um, in helping me get into uh, contact with her therapist okay. who I have been with since freshman year of college. Okay, so this is a therapist <coughs> who specializes in eating disorders? She doesn't specialize in it, I don't okay. think, but she, this is where I started to talk about my control issues and my anxiety okay. issues, okay. which was kind of the whole root of the eating disorder. Mm -hmm. So it was really important to kind of get down to um, like I said, the root of it, mm -hmm. and to talk about you know the problems that was going on in my life and things like that, which have eventually led me to um, develop a lot of skills that have been helpful for me to control my anxiety, um, my stress, mm -hmm. which in turn helped me to, you know, work the eating disorder. Right, and that's amazing because even thinking back to the last show you did, where you're mm -hmm. talking about meal prepping and going to the gym, and your goal was to be stronger. You can see just by that how far you've come. Yeah. So that's Thank amazing. You. So you said a lot of it was control issues and kind of the group of friends you were hanging out with. I know a lot of times, you mentioned also celebrities, mm -hmm. and a lot of times, especially young, impressionable girls are looking at celebrities either on TV or in magazines. Did that affect you at all, especially with, you know, being skinny and not necessarily, you know, things, so many things are Photoshopped nowadays. Right. So did those affect you also? Well, like I said, um, it was a lot to do with you know my control and it was a lot of my family dynamics where I compared myself a lot to um, I compared my family to other families okay um, and I had to get to that point where you know I when I did start seeing the therapist I talked a lot about my family mm -hmm. and how I came to realize that not every family is perfect right so I can't compare myself to others because you know some families might look like you know they have everything but mm -hmm. they don't and it, right. it takes a lot to it comes to that realization that okay, I can't change my family. Mm -hmm. So if I can't change them, I can change myself for okay. the better. Do you think that that's kind of a starting point for a lot of girls who face that issue, where it may not necessarily be oh, I I think I'm fat, or I think I need to lose weight, or I'm not skinny enough, but it's actually outside factors that are yes. influencing. I definitely think so. Okay. So do you have a support system or did you have a support system when you were going through therapy in yes. addition to it? Yes. Okay. Uh, like I said, I was very open about my issues. So um, I came out to my mom about it, my family, uh, my friends. I mm -hmm. thought it was really important. I was like, listen, guys, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. Um, you know, I'm sorry that I've missed out on so many, mm -hmm. you know, fun times and stuff. But I just wanted to let you know where I'm at. Um, okay. And I would really love really love your support and they were more than willing to give it. Okay. And it was also great to be open to them about it because if I was having a bad day or if I did have a setback, I would be 
um, able to be open with them about it, mm -hmm. and um, they understood. Right, because so. a lot of times people have to hide it, which is kind of the question I asked you in the beginning, mm -hmm. if people picked up on it, because sometimes people don't pick up on it for quite a while. Right. And when I did bring it up to my friends, they were like, you know, I kind of sort of had an idea, but they mm -hmm. didn't, didn't want to impose right. on me. Because God know. forbid you weren't, they wouldn't want to. Right. Did you feel beautiful or self-confident when you started as well as during and then now? Kind of how you saw yourself transition and how you felt about your body. Right. Um, I honestly did not feel beautiful. Um, you know, my goal was to be skinny. Mm -hmm. You know, and I honestly, I didn't feel beautiful. Um, I got, like I said, I got to a point where I, you know, my physical attributes were affected. You know, my hair started thinning and things like that. And um, I kind of felt like I was weak. So now I've come to the point where I feel more beautiful because I am taking care of my body and mm -hmm. I, I'm going out and having a burger every week or something. You know, I'm not okay. restricting myself anymore. And Good. I restricted myself so much to the point that I didn't have any energy and I just didn't feel great about myself. So now um, I've learned that, you know, life's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. It's great to go out with your friends um, and have drinks and apps or, you know, have a great time with them and mm -hmm. still feel beautiful. Well, you are beautiful. Thank you. So are you. <laughs> Thank you. So what advice do you have for girls who feel like that may be a path they want to go down, who haven't necessarily started or haven't actually done it but are thinking oh well I want to be skinnier or have that imposing factors from the outside right um, I mean I understand it's there's a lot of pressure out there um, but you know what I want to say to those girls it's you know we're all beautiful and um, and it actually you know the media has been I don't want to say it's been so much better but mm -hmm. it's it's kind of improved in the sense where you know, skinny isn't everything, really. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, there's been more positive feedback about, you know, just being fit and just, you mm -hmm. know, loving who you are. Right. So as long as girls realize that, you know, it's important to be healthy, not necessarily skinny. Skinny isn't always necessarily healthy, and mm -hmm. that's what I realized because, yeah, I got skinny, but I, was, I still wasn't happy with myself. Right. You know, it was important for me to become healthy. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of, you know, things that I did that um, helped me to get through it was, you know, getting up every morning, looking in the mirror, and just be like, you know, Stephanie, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think it's important for girls to start, you know, doing that just to get, you know, their self confidence yeah. up and their self esteem up because yeah. it starts with, from within. Exactly. You have to love yourself before right. you can love anyone else. Right. And now, what advice do you have for anyone who's currently struggling? Um, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to, it's hard, but it's important to be open about it. Um, you know, setbacks happen, and that's totally understandable. Setbacks happen with everyone, mm -hmm. whether you're trying to quit smoking and you have a cigarette once in a while or, right. you know, something. It's important to communicate mm -hmm. because once you start becoming more open about it, that's when you can start taking the right steps towards a better life and a healthier, more positive life. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much again for talking Thank about you. this. We'll take a break and be right back. Welcome back. I'm here with my next guest, Jenna Mitchell. Jenna, why don't you give us a little introduction about yourself? Um, well, I went to 
college for graphic design, so I okay. um, was very creative and was involved on campus with a peer education group called REACH, okay. which stands for Real Education About College Health. Okay. So we had three different subgroups. Um, one was HEAL, um, which dealt with mental health. Okay. One was um, STAR, which dealt with drug and alcohol abuse, and then the other one was sexual health. Okay. Um, and so really within the mental health, we did a lot with body image okay. and how it affected the women and even the men on our campus. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of different programs that we had. Um, we had the body-mind dialogues. We had where we actually created life-size Barbie and Ken dolls. Mm -hmm. So then you can see the perspective of what these dolls would look like if they were real people right. and how obscure they are. Mm -hmm. Because um, isn't it correct that if Barbie's dimensions were actually proportionate to a real person, they wouldn't even be existent? Is yeah, that something like that? Her, especially from like her chest to her hip size, mm -hmm. is so obscure, and it, especially what her waistline is, mm -hmm. she wouldn't actually be able to fit all of the organs in her body um, because it's just so out there she's meant to have a very large chest very large hips mm -hmm. long legs long arms mm -hmm. the beautiful hair but right. if you put it in real life she wouldn't even be able be to function mm -hmm. um, and it's crazy to the think that's the toy that we give to these young impressionable kids mm -hmm. that many of them view as icons as they grow up yeah, and you're always just like, oh, I want to be so much like Barbie. Or mm -hmm. yeah, I know when I was growing up, I wanted to have the life-size Barbie. Yeah. But when you really think about it, yeah, it was the size of a small child. Mm -hmm. but it was meant to mimic a small child, not the woman that she was supposed to be. Become, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about some of the discussions or some of the issues that these students came to um, you on campus with and the, the struggles that they face because you mentioned yes this is a problem with guys as well mm -hmm. so how you know some of the issues that they came to you with sure so um, there were so many different programs that we had on campus like I named a few um, but I also went to a school that was very we had a lot of athletes mm -hmm. so there was always the issue of being really fit or being very thin and going to the gym constantly if you're not in season, mm -hmm. eating right, eating healthy, or especially the cliche freshman 15 where mm -hmm. a lot of students don't understand that balance. Mm -hmm. um, and where you develop that, the concept of you know trying to figure out how to be an adult but you're still a child. Mm -hmm. And being able to know what you are and aren't supposed to be putting in your body. Right. And then all the psychological issues that come along with that. I know for myself, I struggled a lot with like first semester of freshman year of drinking, partying, mm -hmm. all these girls being picture perfect mm -hmm. and having to or wanting to be like that mm -hmm. and be so I was comparing myself to everybody else and just trying to figure out what the right balance was and I had a very difficult time with that. So then throughout the years, especially from freshman to sophomore year, I got involved in REACH, and that's really where I took charge in trying to make a difference on campus because I went through the struggle, and so I wanted to help other women. With um, the Barbie, we had a G.I. Joe. <laughs> like, men think mm -hmm. that they are supposed to be super buff and tall and tall, dark, and handsome, and mm -hmm. that's really not what reality is because right. he's, the G.I. Joe is the same as Barbie. Right they would not be able to function on a basic human level mm -hmm. with how they are constructed. Well, did you guys do workshops in groups with these students or was it one-on-one -on -one peer educating? Um, it was more of like a workshop type aspect or okay. even just programs that we did throughout campus. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there were some programs that we did where we would write on the mirrors with lipstick or markers and okay. write that you are beautiful. Okay. So to try to... Um, deteriorate the negative talk. Mm -hmm. um, there are other programs like the vagina monologues that we performed where they women perform monologues that other women had written about their different experiences with their body, mm -hmm. with love, with sex, 
um, just trying to figure all that out. There's even women that have their monologues about rape and mutilation, so mm -hmm. there's just like a whole spectrum of what women have to deal with on a day-to-day right. -day basis. So did you see anyone in these programs that came in and maybe was struggling a lot and through the help that you guys provided were able to get better or at least take steps in the right direction? Definitely. Okay. Um, especially with my my group, we had we were based out of the counseling center. So a lot of us knew, especially who went through all the trainings that we had to go through, we knew exactly how to approach and take care of a situation or if we weren't able to deal with it on our own we knew what steps to take to get the right help either okay. going through the counseling center going to the health center taking someone to the hospital mm -hmm. calling campus safety if need be like okay. we knew exactly where our resources were mm -hmm. and how to get them okay. within the timely manner that needed to happen so is this maybe not that program specifically but the general idea of it is that something that's located on every college campus no it, okay it, you have to have somebody through the staff that's willing to create the program and it's something that I've always been interested in creating just even in high school I think that it should be started as early on mm -hmm. as middle school maybe even elementary school depending on mm -hmm. um, where you're located and everything but it's really something that needs to be learned early on that you don't have to be the stick skinny mm -hmm person that you are beautiful in every shape size and color you come in okay. because that's what real is right so do you have a success story maybe that you could speak to? Um, there's not like a specific story, I guess, that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. It's more of just the growth that I've seen through the people in the program that I was with. Okay. How they struggled with their own body image issues and how they've come out, I guess, on the other side of where they've learned to love themselves. And okay. There's even a project that I'm working on now that focuses on the female body and photographing the nude body and trying to make people realize how beautiful it is mm -hmm. and show it in a raw way of where it's not photoshopped like maybe okay. there's some color changes mm -hmm. from black and white to color to color black and white but mm -hmm. no photoshopping in way of distorting the body because right. with photoshop yeah it's a great tool but it can really hurt somebody because you're creating, you have someone that's normal and you're making them to something fictional. Right. And that's what these young women are trying to become mm -hmm. something that doesn't exist. And so that they're striving for the unattainable. Right. So, what has your experience been in trying to get subjects to photograph naked? Has that been difficult? Uh, sometimes, especially people are like, well, I don't want my face in it. Like, where am I going to be? How naked do I have to be for mm -hmm. me? Um, I want it to be as comfortable as the person is. With okay. How naked, what environment, whether they want their face in it, they don't want it because I'm not going to use it in any inappropriate way. I'm using right. it as a form of art, mm -hmm. a form of expression, almost mm -hmm. like a, a PSA type thing. And trying to help people Correct. in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So have you actually begun this project and begun shooting? I have, okay. yeah. So I um, photographed a subject where we used a high contrast in light mm -hmm. um, and then also use different props like this particular um, person we used a guitar and okay so it was just using the balance of the different colors within the guitar against the nude body and then okay. once I get it onto my computer just being able to edit it in a powerful way that sends a message that's like the human body the female body is mm -hmm. beautiful and we need to respect it the way that it should be. That's incredible. I would love to check that out yeah, when you're no. done. So what advice do you have? You said you work specifically or worked mm -hmm. specifically with college students. Mm -hmm. That's a very difficult time. As you said, a lot of people struggle with a lot of different issues. What advice would you give to, you know, girls and guys going through college and the struggle that they are facing? My biggest advice would be there's a phrase that I came up with many years ago is that it takes a strong person to do it on your own. It mm -hmm. takes an even stronger person to ask for help. And that's been my main thing is you can't do anything on your own. So why are you trying to fight a battle right. mentally alone? Because you're not going to come out on the other side. Absolutely. And so it's always okay to ask for help. That's so. very true. Thank you so much Thank for contributing. For You've been great. Thanks for watching another episode of Hashtag This and That on Woman to Woman TV.